afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 1016. We are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, on all the podcast platforms. Uh, please, fans, tune in. We, we're joined by a really special guest. His name is Cam Jansen. He is a former NHL right wing. He played for the New Jersey Devils and St. Louis Blues. Man, what a great career. And uh, he's known for fight his fights, which we'll get to. Uh, but Cam... Man, what a great career, like I said. And uh, obviously, you're doing big things off the off the ice now. You have a podcast with Andy Strickland called the Cam and Strick Podcast. So everyone, please go check that out. Subscribe to the podcast. I listened to some of their episodes already, man. You guys killing it. Um, and first of all, fans, please tune in. Uh, you can ask questions on our Spreaker app to uh, Cam today. But Cam, thank you for joining the show. Uh, it's truly an honor. And uh, for, like I said, great career. And how are you and your family doing today? Dude, I'm chilling, man. We uh, it's like 75 degrees in, in uh, St. Albans out here. Again, I'll say St. Louis, but we're way out in the kind of the wooded area. Kate and I, my wife and I, moved out here on a little golf course. But I'm usually I'm really from Eureka, Missouri. Uh, grew up in Eureka, Missouri, and uh, went to Eureka High School, hmm. and then went to Windsor because the Windsor Spitfires drafted me. So, uh, but we're chilling out here. And, uh, you know, the puppies are cruising around and we're watching people uh, uh, be terrible at golf. <laughs> yeah. So um, before we go, before we get started, um, my friend, when I announced this interview, uh, my our friend David Marshall, I don't know if you remember him. He played minor league hockey against you. Yeah. 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 So uh, he, he when I when I, I when I told him that you're coming on the show, he's like, what? what? This is crazy. <laughs> uh, he, he, he said he has a lot of war stories with you. <laughs> yeah well hey you know there's a lot of them out there man when you were when you're fighting you know 35 times a year and especially when i was young uh yeah you have stories with a lot of guys even playing different leagues you know there's always there's always a story even doing a podcast now like everybody knows something about something and some of them are uh flabricated by uh, by a long stretch and exaggerated but for the most part they're pretty cool to uh, reminisce when you're talking with the boys yeah so tell our fans, I mean, um, obviously you got drafted by the Devils, but I want to, you, you grew up in St. Louis, so it must have been extra special for you when you got the chance to play with St. Louis Blues. So take us to that uh, uh, that opportunity, and uh, and then obviously what, what did it mean to your family, your friends, for you to be able to play for the team? Um, you, basically, you, you grew up there and, and the team you grew up with. Well, I grew up in the middle of the woods, like uh, 45 miles away from St. Louis, Hockey wasn't that big, but the blues were huge. And my parents would take me to blues games. And I'd watch Twister, Tony Twist, Kelly Chase, Brett Hall cruise around. And, and you know, my parents never played hockey. They just liked the blues. I was a first-generation hockey player in my family. And we didn't have, you know, they, we didn't grow up wealthy. We're way out in the, you know, a blue-collar part of kind of middle, you know, out, outskirts of St. Louis, Missouri. And I rollerbladed all the time and I love the blues and I got into it and I was a good athlete and I played all the sports. So I got into it and I got pretty good, pretty quick. And I was very aggressive, which always helps. <laughs> um, and so like, I just started kind of moving up in the ladder. Um, but, but playing roller hockey was really what got me into hockey. Uh, and no one's ever made the NHL at this point when I started, uh, no one played for the blues. And wow. so I kind of like just did it, but I was very confident though. Cause I was, I was strong and I was like, when they, I was again, the aggressiveness, if your kid's aggressive, tame him and show him the pathway because good things happen. You just have to control it, you know, but, uh, but I just kind of moved along and just got better and better and better, but it all started with roller hockey. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So who were some of the hockey players that you looked up to while growing up? Dude. Well, I love Pavel Bure. You gotta <laughs> think this is like the early nineties, you know, and so you like you had Beckett's remember the hockey cards yeah. and stuff. I used to love hockey cards and this, the, but the, like, again, hockey's not driven in our face down here. Yeah. And there's, it's not, I'm in Missouri in the early nineties. So it's like, it's not like it is now we're, we're all like made in the NHL and guys are coming out like the wazoo. But back then it was kind of like either you like the blues and you just know the blues. So they just were awesome. The blues were hockey was such a cool thing. They've been here for a while. My mom and dad took me to games. I got obsessed with it. I got Tony Twist beating the hell out of people, taking his jersey off in a penalty box, flexing. And I see all like the women are like going crazy for him. And when I'm a kid, I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. You know, like, can I, and then Brad Hall scoring 80 goals a year. You're like, what? I'd go to his McDonald's drive through and get all his little toys and stuff. Yeah. So I became obsessed with the blues and I became obsessed with hockey. But in order to play hockey, I had to rollerblade all the time and, 
become an athlete and it just worked. Wow. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, in your, um, in the early, when you started playing hockey, you, you played in a junior hockey league. And uh, what, what did you tell our fans? What did you learn in that league? And obviously you, you played right wing, but what did you get to play any other positions uh, before right wing? Yeah, I was a winger, man. But like, you gotta think again, like going to high school here, I was like in sophomore year and I'm playing triple A hockey for the triple A amateur blues yeah. and I'm scoring a lot of goals and I'm hitting guys like crazy and I'm tough. And I got just scouted by all these scouts to go up my dad and all these tournaments up in Michigan playing against, you know, you know, like, you know, the Toronto Marlies and stuff. And I was just crushing guys and scoring hmm. and scouts would come up and give my dad little cards and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And an agent came, agents are coming up and they're like, okay. And my dad's like, okay, whatever family advisors at the time. And they're like, well, they, the OHL wants to draft you. And me and my family down here are like, what's, what's that even mean? Ontario hockey league. What, what is that? <laughs> is there, we didn't even know what Canada was that much, you know? I mean, like we we're traveling up there here and there, but we were, we didn't know. We just, we just kind of like, ignorant i don't know what everything because no one's really done much down in st louis at the time so windsor we go up and the agent says yeah windsor wants to draft you so i go up to the ohl draft sit next to dustin brown mm -hmm. and uh and get drafted by the windsor spitfires and went up there and you have to left my family 16 17 left uh, my friends and went up there and played in this little town in windsor ontario and i started fighting guys and mm -hmm. hitting guys and being like trying to be like great you know fun and entertaining and the city was the city loved it i've never been popular in my life really in high school you were a little bit but this was a different kind of popularity and it just was awesome and then i started making money <laughs> it is so speak of uh what uh what guy take us back to your first fight i mean uh what, what obviously you're known first for, fight <laughs> you obviously you're known for all these fights throughout your career but what, what um what got you ticked off easy to get into these fights nothing huh? just being an entertainer I didn't even, I would, I could be such a light switch. You know, I always wanted to like put it on a show and I loved hitting guys. And I want to like, you want to go? Like I would never back down. Like I just loved it. You know, like some, a lot of these guys, man, they fight cause they have to. I loved it. I was wild and crazy and like full of passion. And I just wanted to let it out. And uh, thank God my dad got me in the hockey or who knows where I'd be. But, um, but yeah, though, I, it wasn't like anybody pissed me off. I was just like, let's go. I got people in the stands. I got family. There's girls watching. Like, mm -hmm. let me do something. Like, I'm a kid from, like, the middle of Missouri. Like, I want to – fans, like, energize me. I love it. I love putting on a show. I love ma making people laugh and making people cheer for you. It's a euphoric high you can't replicate. Well, so uh, tell our fans about – obviously, after the Junior Hockey League, got, in 2001, he got drafted in the third round in the Ontario – Ontario Hockey League and what was that like for you uh, getting selected there in the third round man I didn't even know what I didn't even know what it was <laughs> I was like oh I remember going up to Mike Kelly our GM in Windsor me and my dad are like bright I like ah, taking pictures of everybody take, putting a jersey on I go wow this jersey's really cool looking it's the <laughs> first time I've seen it it's funny man we we're like we were aloof to everything we didn't know but we went up there and I, I went up there and started kicking ass and it's just <laughs> and it just came really fast and all my buddies would come up to windsor we go to the bars up there it was 19 to drink we were wow. treated like superstars all my buddies in st louis were like going to house parties <laughs> meanwhile i could walk into a bar wow. up there high five people you know oh god it, it was crazy man yeah so uh, we, we have a fan question for you uh they want to know if you weren't playing hockey what, what would you be doing that's a great question well i'll tell you this you know, I was, I was a pretty good student until I wasn't because I just wanted to focus on hockey. And it's hard to say this, but I, I don't know. Probably the military. Mm. With you. Mm. And I know it's easy to say, and I respect all of them. And, you know, I'm a military dude. Like, my, you know, I, I'm, in, I'm from Eureka, Missouri, dude. Trust me. Yeah. That's military through and through. And it's, I hate when people are like, oh, I would have been done. No, but I think I would have tried to do that, you know. Well, but I played professional hockey instead. Thank God. <laughs> I know. You never know. It would have been an Iraq war. I would have been over there for eight years. Wow. Um, yeah. You have any military pe pe people in your family? or? Yeah. Well, I mean, my, my dad missed Vietnam. My brother was a police officer. And then, oh. then we quit. But I, my grandfather's, oh, hell yeah. The World War II, baby. Wow. The Forgotten War, Korean War. They were, they were badasses. And then they went through a lot of stuff. 
and I, I look at it like, oh, but I would have done it, but it's hardcore. And I lived such a good life to work. And all my buddies, I got a lot of military buddies and they, some of them are going through some hardcore times. Some of them are very successful. It's just a mixture of stuff. So maybe I would, I would have been tough enough, maybe not, but uh, I think that probably would have been my second choice if I wouldn't have made it. So we are live with former St. Louis Blues, New Jersey Devils, right wing Cam Jansen. Uh, we have another fan question. Uh, I love these fan interaction when, it, when, when we have these guests oh, on. Yeah. Someone, someone wants to know, uh, what was your, some of your funny moments throughout your career? Oh, good God. <laughs> I mean, man, I have some crazy stuff that went down. I partied hard. I burned both ends of the candle. I wasn't skilled in it. So I always had to work out so hard mm -hmm. and box and train. And, but I did go out a lot with the guys. I have an addictive <laughs> personality. You know, we had so much fun, man. I was single for a long time, too, which is hard to juggle sometimes, you know, because like, oh, you always want to go out and stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> one, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, I can't tell a couple of <laughs> Oh, what are we on? Is this a podcast? Are we on? Are we on? Okay. Yeah, I got to watch what I'm doing. Okay, no, 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 I got no, you. you. No, you're, you're allowed to curse on this. No, I, all right. I know, but you know how it is. Okay. <laughs> but even it's so funny, like uh, even coming to St. Louis, I'm complaining in my hometown. You know, like you, you just, people, the cameras are on. Yeah, like you're the first kid ever to play for the Blues. You're like, ah. And so my first practice, Andy Murray's a coach. All the guys, man, I'm pretty wild kid. Everybody's kind of looking at me like, what is this kid, you know? And I remember like Andy Murray would always do something like blow the whistle and everybody had to skate towards him during practice. And if the last guy wasn't there, he had to skate around. And so my first game, my first practice, we do that. And I'm like, obviously, I have no idea what's going on. So everybody skates over to Andy. And I'm like, ah, what? And, and all of a sudden, like, you got to skate around. So I skate around. Everybody watches you. <laughs> and it's my first day. Cameras are on me. I'm telling about my story. The first one ever. I'm kind of a goofball. No one, you know, I skate around and I go to stop to spray the, gr the crowd and I toe pick Ooh. and I slide skate first right into Jamal Mayers and almost like wow. cut his legs off and run into everybody. And I think I heard a couple guys. Ooh. Very embarrassing. I was it was all over St. Louis sports <laughs> media that night. It was a very, very embarrassing moment. Like there's a billion things. That's like the, you know, lighthearted version of what I could say. But that was kind of funny and it kind of blew up. But. Uh, I think people laughed in the end. <laughs> Besides the guys that died from my uh, skate uh, blade. You know? uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of working hard, obviously you you brought the toughness into the league, and you have to work hard every day. And I think there's a player from the Rangers that uh, that I think that, that reminds of of yourself, uh, Ryan Lindgren. He brings toughness every uh, every day to the game. Would you say that he's like you? Uh, he's the type of player that like you or? Man, he's 10 times better hockey player than I am. Dude, I was a psycho. <laughs> I was fighting the heavyweight six foot seven. He ain't down on that. But he's scoring goals, making yeah. plays left and right. He is 10 times more skilled than me. He's got a little flair to him. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's just, I, I, he's, way, he's way better player than I am. But I get what you're saying. And I hope he could come out tonight and do, you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I Tampa scares me, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got the guys over there, man. They just know how to win, dude. And now Vasilevsky's like, no, I'm the big dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is going to be a weird series coming up for you, man. I'm just saying. Oof, if we, and if, I don't care. Yeah. Don't worry, you're wrong. I want Patty Maroon to win another cup, I guess, because I go to his cup parties and we party like rock stars. Nice. But other than that, I kind of want something new. Yeah. But I don't want Colorado to win because of a lot of reasons. St. Louis, Stan Kroenke, they beat yeah. us. Kadri was kind of a thing, you know. Well, wow. yeah, so uh, tell our fans about the, the moment when you got drafted by the New Jersey Devils, uh, 17th overall 2002 draft. And uh, and once you got you, your name called and re, uh, then you worked worked hard throughout your career and finally getting to the NHL. Take us to that. Well, uh, again, had no idea what was going on. I was 18. <laughs> And so my agent's like, come to Toronto. Oh, t t you know, 17 teams want to meet with you. I'm like, okay. I had a really good first year in Windsor, you know. I was like, I had like 300 minutes of penalties. Oh. I was fighting everybody. So I led the League of Pims. I had like 25 points. I was crushing guys. They're like, what? <laughs> and so there's a lot of teams that want to talk. Like, Who is this psycho Eureka Hillbilly? And then, you know, so I had to meet with all these teams. And so I remember meeting with the Devils first. And it was really intimidating with Lou, who I absolutely love. And my family loves him. 
to death. He was so good to me. Lou Lamoureux, that is. Um, and so anyway, we uh, we wait. I thought I was going to go second to fourth round. And so like the f- second round, I'm like, oh, here we go. Nope. Third round, a kid gets drafted right next to me who played for the Windsor Spitfires. And so we thought we were getting drafted by the Devils. Devils pick from the Windsor Spitfires, Aaron Niddle. And, and I thought me and my dad thought it was me. And it, it was me. So we jumped up like, yeah. And it was Nitsy, And he was sitting right next to us. We're like, oh, oh okay. And so the, the round after that, 117 overall, they did uh, pick uh, pick me. But everybody else stands up and shakes hands. I jumped up and me and my dad slapped hands like, what's up? You know, it, was, it was pretty cool. We were different than everybody else. We're from <laughs> Eureka. You know, we, uh, we, uh, we we're very uh, passionate. So we have another fan question. Someone wants to know, um, what, was your, uh, what was your hype music? Oh, dude, I love my heavy metal, baby. I like Pantera. I like Judas Priest. But I also like Pink Floyd and Pearl Jam, Raging Against Machine. I've been sevenfold, Lamb of God. Ooh, mm-hmm. American heavy metal through and through, baby. Uh, God. But I also like techno stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm all over the place. But my hardcore getting pumped up because I got to fight a guy six foot seven. That looks like a Viking back in the 900s raiding villages and pillaging. Whoa. Like, I'd have to fight those guys with no teeth with a big uh, mohawk. Like, I got to get pumped up. Pantera is my number one. I love him. You know, just hardcore. My dad got me into heavy metal when I was young. <laughs> it's weird. He got me into Raging his Machine. Uh, I loved it in the 90s, yeah. And I like Rush. Mm. I, you know, I don't know. There's a ton, man. I'm all, I'm all over the place. Yeah, so uh, when Ken Danico when Ken Danico was on the show last week, he spoke highly of Lou. So can you speak on Lou uh, also and uh, tell tell the fans how how grateful are you guys for him to be able to give you guys a chance to come to the team and uh, and uh, Lou is an amazing person in the NHL, well respected. So speak on him because uh, Ken spoke highly of him. Oh, I love Lou. He took a he took a chance on me, a wild kid from Middle Missouri. He knew I was a, I was a good kid, although I was kind of crazy and I partied, but he knew he can control me and he did. I learned so many life lessons from that, that man. He was my first boss. I would study him. Hmm. I would get to the practice so early to where no one else was there. And he'd walk, when he walked in, because he walked in before everybody, he'd see me first. Yeah. Like stuff like that. Like, God. I did torture him a couple times with some <laughs> stuff, but he knew I'd go out there and bleed for the guys. And I was a good teammate. And I might've even played a couple of years extra because he kept me around to be a good, good teammate. Mm-hmm. And that makes me feel good. I love that man. My mom and dad love him. My buddies love him. My wife loves him. You know, I know he's hardcore with different shit. Who came? I don't give a <laughs> shit. He was also with me and that's all that matters. And he, you know, he took a chance on me and he got me out of my, we live a good life now. A really good life. Wow. Kate and I are chilling. My mom and dad are chilling, listening to me on the radio every day. <laughs> and I and Lou was a big part of that. So anybody could you make and knock him all you want. That man was good to me. I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, and he didn't have to be. Yeah. Just so you know, he could have kicked me aside. It didn't. He could didn't matter. But I I I knew how he thought. Like I knew he loved Pat. I just knew. I thought I knew what he thought. I, I, and, you know, he's so gosh, he start, gosh darn complex, but I knew what he wanted from me. And he, I don't know, it's hard to explain, right? but anyway, well, I love that guy. He, he, I get he, emotional. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he knows to find talent, man. And he found, yeah. he, he found great ones in you and Ken. So kudos to him, man. This guy. And Daniel's he, another, hey, Daniel knows what's, what I'm talking about, yeah. too. He knows, <laughs> and I'm, I love that guy. Daniel's awesome. But he had Daniel, like he, Lou knew what he had with Daniel. Like you're gonna, Daniel's gonna bring it every single night. You knew exactly what you're gonna get. Now Daniel might go party, you know, his early days and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but Lou accepted that and knew that he was gonna bring the heat every damn day and would help him. Oh yeah, dude, tell him, man. Yeah. So speaking of, you know, you're you're the uh, Rob Gronkowski of the NHL. (laughs) (laughs) I wish. God, like you're being too kind. Uh, Rob Gronkowski's like, just like a win. No, he might be. He might be. Dano might be. Dano won three cups and played 20 years. He's a Rob Gronkowski. Wow. I'm a partier. 
<laughs> but that's it. That's the only like comparison you have with me and him. Yeah. So, um, so, so in the early, the beginnings of your career, man, you made your debut against the New York Rangers. Uh, and then also you led the Devils with 11 fighting majors and you scored your first goal, NHL goal with the Washington Capitals. So tell your fans about the, those couple, those, tell our fans about those like couple of moments you had throughout your beginning of your career. Well, my parents were up watching me play in Albany when I was in the minors when I was 20. And they were up watching me play. And there's a couple of things, drama that happened where I was, maybe the organization wasn't happy with me because of something my like dad, I don't even get into it. Well, it wasn't that bad, but it was kind of a goofy, stupid thing. I don't want to get into it. But my mom and dad were up there, so I was already weirded out. And I knew I had to bring the heat. And I was a young kid. You know, I just signed, all that stuff. But I knew I was on the verge of play because I was crushing guys. And I, and I knew Lou liked me. And so my mom and dad were up watching me play. And I had a badass game fighting Mitch Frick. I just did everything. Had a nice assist, crushing guys. But I was weirded out by a couple of the actions I had beforehand a couple of weeks earlier. I thought I was getting sent down. So I was just like on edge. And so we're in a, so I had an awesome game. My parents, uh, I was in eating pizza with my parents in the hotel room because mm -hmm. they were in town hanging out with them. You know, watching the Devils play. And my dad looked at me and goes, you're going to get called up. And it's just like a weird thing. And I'm like, huh? And I'm like, yeah, you have no idea. And then uh, I get a phone call. It's Robbie Fatorik, our head coach. And he goes, yep. You're playing, you're not playing tomorrow. I go, what? He goes, you're playing in Madison Square Gardens against the Rangers. You got called up. And it just was like my heart just was, ah, oh, God. First kid ever to do it from wow. St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I knew no one will be able to ever, ever take this away from me. It just was off. So I was with my parents and we drove down. They watched my first game in MSG. And Darius Kasparitis knocked me on my ass for a shift. Hmm. And then I had just had a good game. It was good, man. This just was good. It was all good. Wow. I worked hard for that, though. Yeah, you, you definitely did work hard, man. Like, man, like I said, you, you had a heck and of my parents did. Yeah, for yeah. that. So they deserve to see me live. I know. I know it's my own little bubble. You're not Peyton Manning, but like the little things that my parents got to do to, you know, we went through a lot of crazy stuff. And, you know, they were just there for a lot of cool things. And I think that's who knows what that is. But it's when you're good to your kids, man, sometimes they, you know, life rewards you with stuff. Yeah, so um, we have another fan question. Someone wants to know, what was the fan base is like in New Jersey and St. Louis? Oh, badass. Oh, <laughs> St. Louis, don't even get... St. Louis, listen, I'm in a bubble out here like you can't believe. Can't go to guessing. Everybody knows who you are. I love that, man. I do. Sometimes it gets annoying. It's all good. St. Louis, like I was in a bubble. Jersey was awesome because you could hide there. But the people were hardcore. Like I met so yeah. many friends. Kate and I, my wife, we go up there all the time. We meet all our buddies are up there. We go eat good food, go down to the shore, do this. I mean, I met so many badass dudes, wow. police officers to bar owners to, I don't know, you know, not even in the city. It's more just Jersey people. We, I, we love them. And they were so damn good to me. Like, I don't know. Like I, we, Kate and I, honestly, any chance we go up to Jersey, we go hang out with fans and go to the game and walk around. We'll, I'll walk around and high five. They, I don't know. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. They were so damn good to us. I have so many friends up there. The food. Oh, God, I miss the food so much up there. They just, they like the hardcore, man. Yeah. All them Jersey boys and girls, they loved it. They loved yeah. my, like, energy. And in St. Louis, like, obviously, like your hometown kid, like, oh. I had to get the hell out of here for a little bit, <laughs> for a while. Don't get me wrong, but I, I I'm, you know, it's it, it was it was perfect for my situation. Both both uh, teams. Hey, I'm from Jersey. I'm in Jersey right now. You know, say, do you know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah. I loved it, dude. That, my buddies would drive me around, so I didn't have to deal with this. The, I love. We go to little dallies, yeah. all these. Oh yeah. God! And the, and the and the parties down here are amazing too. In Jersey, we go to the shore. I, if you want to chill, you go to Wildwood, yeah. and then you chill. You go to Lobster House down there. Then we yeah. go to like DJs and DJs. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I'd go with like twenty different guys, so no one mess with us. We're friends with everybody. It just was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, headline, 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 great. headliner too, right? Oh yeah, man. All that. Mm -hmm. It was cool. We have a lot of friends. We met a lot of friends up there. We did. Yeah. So um, tell our fans. Uh, obviously. Was it tough leaving the New Jersey Devils? And um, what, 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 what was the biggest factor for you to go back home to play for the Blues? Well, I had no choice in it. Oh. I ripped my shoulder out against George Peros. 
I was sitting there like uh, depressed. And so getting traded in my hometown is like the coolest thing in the world. You know, I'm growing up watching the blues and all of a sudden Lou comes up and is like, Hey, I got had to trade you the blue. He did me a favor. Oh, okay. It was a, it's like the best thing for my dude. I do a radio show three hours a day. Yeah. I got a very su- successful podcast mm-hmm. and it's all because I, for the most part, play for the blues. Like I could do a lot of cool things in this town because I played here. If I didn't play here, you really got to work to like own your notoriety. Like I was in front of everybody for, you know, like they probably got sick of me. They marketed you so much to where if you do the right thing and you're nice to people and you retire in St. Louis after playing there and busting right. your ass for them, like you kind of could do what you want. If you're good to people, you get my drift. Yeah. Can't be a good, no, no, just yeah. be good. People yeah. take care of you. So we live a good life, man. Yeah, so speaking of, um, so what was it like wearing the St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, St. Louis Blues uniform? What was that like wearing that coming back home? I mean, it's all, I think I stole like 15 practice jerseys. <laughs> oh, wow. And gave to my buddies and, you know, how it goes. But yeah, man, it was awesome. Now, it became a little too much. I became really popular really quick. Um, and, uh, it, you know, like, they'll be hard on you, but I, they treated me good. It, it was great. I just... You did, I, at the end, it's like, okay, I got I just gotta get out of here for a second because of not the organization is great. Yeah. It's just more like you just too much stuff, like your buddies and family and tickets and stuff. It just becomes a pain. It really does. But if I didn't have any, I was controlling everything. Like if you're a big dog and you play, like if Matthew Kachuk came to St. Louis, like everybody's gonna take care of it. He's not gonna deal with shit. like people take care of him. I was a rookie, I didn't know, not a rookie, but I was. I was just like wanting to do everything for everybody. It just became a little too much. And then you're partying all the time. You're like, yeah, I might have to leave the state for a little bit. I don't know. So I, but now it's like, it, it's, it's good. I, we, I love, I wouldn't live anywhere else where I'm at right now. Hmm. Um, uh, we have another fan question. Someone, someone wants to know about your pregame routine. Uh, what did you do every game before a, a, a big game heading into? Oh, I was weird, man. I would always be organized. I'd get there before everybody else. I'd stick handle a ball. Blah, 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 blah. I'd, I'd tape all my sticks. You stretch. I do this. I get in a hot tub. I just always be like, hold up my shoulder exercise in case I had to fight somebody. So get my shoulders warmed up so they rip out. I do, I, you know, make sure my skate blades are perfect. Like, there's always something. I was always doing something. I'd get there three hours before. I usually get there two hours. I get there three hours before. Always get there before everybody else. Have everything set up nice. You always have to have a, have to have a system system down don't mm-hmm. just get there put my shit on go out there no no no. find your routine find get your hands going get your gloves right how your pants feel what you know get 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 your system that's your bait that's your that's your second home right. go there and get your shit right i told all the young kids that too just go okay here we go Bubba. check your skates are they good get your stick taped everything organized put your stick hand on the ball just like ryan o'reilly does flip it up do this da, da, da. stick handle get your get your hands going Wow. Damn. Wow. <laughs> so speaking, um, I don't know if you want to speak on this, but tell our fans about the game against Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, where you knocked out Tomas. Yeah. Uh, and then you got suspended three games. And I don't know. But tell, tell, take us to that moment. What, 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 what happened there? Well, I hit him and he got knocked out. And then, um, yeah, he called you in and played me the rest of the game, which he shouldn't. It, it just caused a goddamn firestorm. And I was a young kid, and everyone, I had like death threats and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, it, nowadays, where I was like, uh, I'm like, uh, whatever. But although somebody could have done something crazy, but it's all good. I let the fans like me now up there. So it worked out. But I went and I fought Wade Belak for two and a half minutes. Wow. So the next time I went up there, it was two weeks, and the fans wanted to kill me. And my first shift, I'm like, all right, here we go. We, Wade Belak, God rest your soul, love you. We went two, two and a half minutes, man. And I, I went toe to toe with them and it all sorted itself out. And then the fans still hated me for a while, but then I started doing radio up there <laughs> and they started like me again. They're all cool, man. I don't blame them. They should have hated me. I knocked out one of their best players and it kind of hurt their playoff. And, you know, he's a way better. You still not got, you just got to watch that. But I was young and I finished my check, man. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm just curious. Tell our fans about when you guys, like I'm sure it's uh, you guys uh, always. You guys are risking uh, injuries when you get into these fights. But for you, like 
When you uh, oh, do, you always think about uh, you, you. You can injure yourself or like have it. Hurt. Man, I didn't care. I, yeah, I worried about my shoulder here and there when it got started to get tweaked. But I did get worried about getting knocked out in front of my like you know girlfriend and her family at, in St. Louis and my family watching, and you choking on your tongue, bleeding out of your head, knocked out. Like I did worry about that. It's more like an embarrassment. It's not like I'm worried about getting hurt. It was more like don't embarrass me. You know. I got to bear watch it. I got my friends there. They're driving me home. Mm-hmm. I don't get knocked out. And I've been knocked out by my own teammate at home with my wife there. You know. Oh. Uh, we have another fan question. Someone wants to know some of your other best moments throughout your career. Well, scoring a goal yeah. against uh, Washington Cap, my first goal in Jersey, which took like a year and a half. And the fans were so pumped up about it. And I scored top shelf with a slap shot. And my mom and dad were there. And they were right in the background when I celebrated. And there's a picture of me with them in the background for my first goal. That was lovely. <laughs> well, well, uh, so what, um, what other moments? Or... I mean, there's any time I played was a good moment. <clears throat> you know, like even just like having friends and family come up and watch me play throughout my career was awesome. You know, just, you know, anytime I scored a goal, which only happened six times, but, like, my family would be, like, crying. Everybody would be like, oh, God, he's going to look up. Oh, he's going to, oh, you know. Like, it's just, it's just my mom and dad get to do cool things. They did so much for me. My yeah. friends and everybody, they all support me. And now they listen to me on the radio every damn day. They love my podcast. They watch me play on TV. They watch me live. I flew them everywhere. For my parents everywhere they wanted to go, spent a shit ton of money. I didn't give a damn. Well, so obviously, when you got traded to the Blues, you made your debut against the Phoenix Coyotes wearing number 55, like Lindgren does for the Rangers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, my twin, <laughs> you say, yeah, but uh, take us to that moment when you made your debut uh, after that trade happened and uh, turning uh, t- t- uh, having a new chapter in your life and just and playing for them take it to the debut with yeah them. i mean it just was uh it was a whirlwind a lot of media stuff you know um you call people my buddies call me and all that stuff i, I ran jovanowski first shift i should have fought daniel carcillo i had a breakaway oh <laughs> and the puck bobbled up on me i looked like a jackass but it was all good <laughs> uh but i put a cool i put a good, good show on for everybody it's just it was really weird looking at my family and my friends that usually would never go to jerk you know i was only there for three years but like seeing your friends and people in the stands and I'm just like skating around like, hi, like, what's up? <laughs> like I'm doing, it. I told you I would, you know, and that was kind of cool. Well, I mean, it was very cool. Yeah. So uh, one of our fans want to know, uh, take us to that moment when the St. Louis, St. Louis blues won the Stanley cup. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny? Like I'm, uh, I didn't even, obviously was retired for like five years, but like I partied with that damn thing. Like I did win it. I got invited to everything. And who the guys like Patty, of course, Maroon, like, you know, he party with that damn Stanley cup, but I was in Boston doing TV hmm. when they won. And I got locked out of the goddamn building. Oh, wow. Because I was doing TV upstairs with channel five locally. And I'm like, looking down, everybody's party on the ice. And they wanted me to do a headshot up there and do that. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, finally it was done. And I had to go downstairs and that. <laughs> jackasses that work there no i shouldn't they're cool although they screwed me over they they sent me in a different direction i walked outside the building and i locked myself out then i called my wife we took a chariot 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 with the horses back to our lovely hotel we had and just partied all night anyway so it didn't matter but it was kind of stressful at that time but then afterwards all the guys got home we all all the alumni get invited everywhere so we just party with that damn thing it was fun man yeah, so I found another interesting thing about your career. You, uh, your contract expired or expired 2011 with the St. Louis Blues, and then you got you, you signed a one-year two-way, co- I mean two-way contract with the Devils, and you're, and you're the 22nd player to ever do that to be reacquired by and play for the team. How, what was that like? Well, it just shows Lou liked you. You know, makes me feel good. Like he's like, um, you know, I wasn't that good. I was just. Uh, I was just a hard worker and I was good in the locker room and I was tough and I knew how to hit guys. So for a guy like that to want to resign you and bring you back, it just, it made me feel good. And my mom and dad, like this, you know, he drafted me, he believed in me, took a chance on you. 
and it brought me back and then we went to Stanley Cup, but I didn't play in the Stanley Cup, you know, but I was a part of that team all year and I had to give goddamn speeches before their games because <laughs> Lou and Pete DeBoer would have been going there before, right before they went on the ice during the Stanley Cup run because I wasn't playing to give them pump up speeches. <laughs> I like it's nerdy, but it's like they want you around the guys and it makes you feel good. I, I don't know. So you know what I mean, yeah. So uh, we have uh, one of our other fans want to know what was it like playing in the play- playoff hockey? What was it like playing playoff hockey? Dude, I got to play against the Rangers with the Devils, man. That was awesome. We sweeped them. I played against Carolina, who won the cup. It was cool. It was hardcore. Hardcore, man. It was hardcore. It's 10 times faster and meaner and tougher and, you know, more emotional. And that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Dude, hockey's got a good product. It's so all y'all know. Watch baseball right now. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Like hockey's like in your face, hardcore, fast as hell, nonstop. It's a good product, man. It really is. Yeah. So after your NHL career, you went to, you signed a uh, one year contract with the Nottingham, Nottingham Panthers of the EI, EIHL League. Uh, tell our fans about that league. Love Nottingham. Love all you in Great Britain. I signed over there. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, ah, blah, blah, blah. and they, uh, my buddies played over there and they um, brought me over and they treated me so nice. Oh God. I loved it. I love history. I love castles. I love Kings and Queens and historical stuff, especially English history and British history in a nutshell, Scottish. And I got to play all these teams, seeing these important castles and important mm. scenes from history. I loved it. And they treated my wife like like a princess. Wow. I busted my ass for them over there, by the way. I fought everybody. I was leader. I wanted to be a, not the leader, but like be, not like I'm the chill guy. No, I'm like, I'll be whatever you want. You know, it was just, the guys are so cool. I loved it, man. I need to go back over there and say hey to everybody. I love all you in Great Britain. That was so fun. Even the fans in like Scotland mm-hmm. that hated me at the beginning, I became friends with. Because they get, you know, it just was cool, dude. I got lucky, but I was nice to people. You know, I would hurt guys on the ice, but the fans still liked me because I was nice to them. And you just got to be nice to people, man. I don't know. Unless they treat you like shit, but fans are supposed to treat you like shit, yeah. <laughs> you know? But if you're like, yeah, I get you, man. You should hate me. Then they're like, oh, he's a good dude. And then they'll like, I don't know. It's all a game, dude. But just be nice to people. Kate and I were treated like gold over hmm. there, dude. Yeah, so speaking of uh, great, uh, um, do they, is it the same style of play or kind of? Oh, it's the most. It was the most. It was the. It was such a great hockey. It was old school, not not hook and clutch in nineties, but like tough guy, emotional. It was hardcore. The fans are crazy. It was awesome. Hmm. It was awesome. It truly was. That's why a lot of guys go over there. Well, wow. yeah. So now, uh, <clears throat> tell our fans what's it like. Working on t- working in TV now, uh, seeing seeing the game on a different side, and uh, having a podcast with Andy Strickland, which is amazing. Go check it out, fans. Cam and Strick podcast. But what's a, what's it been like for you, just to trans- transition from a player to an uh, analyst now? Well, it's all different. So, like the radio is different than the podcast. Podcast is all hockey. We get Hall of Fame guys yeah. on. We get the best guests. Like we got. Look at our list. Like we're crazy, man. And Andy and I own it. We're not. Yeah. No one owns us. When the TSN, no, no. Our stool, no one. Andy and I own everything, and we get the monsters on. Now the radio is different story, which I still like. We don't have a boss. Like our our boss is awesome, but I gotta know a lot of shit. I gotta know politics. Mm-hmm. I gotta know up to date shit. I gotta know sh- this, that, and the other. I gotta know hockey, baseball, sports, mm-hmm. and so. And I host it, so I gotta produce my own stuff. So that's tough. I get up at four thirty in the morning. Wow. I bust my ass on that. I gotta be entertaining. TV stuff, uh, you know, it's just hit here and there. It's not a, but like, uh, you know, I hate like having to put a suit on and like put makeup on. Although I like wearing makeup because it makes me look better. But I usually feel like I look hideous every time I'm on TV. So I don't like it. <laughs> um, one of our fans want to know, what are your thoughts on Connor McDavid? Oh, he's the best of the best. Although he needs to be surrounded by a better goalie. Yeah. <laughs> but he's cool, man. He needs to smile a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, so speaking of uh, St. Louis, speaking of baseball, um, what, what are your thoughts? What was your thoughts when uh, Abel Proholz came back to St. Louis? Albert's a good dude, man. He's got yeah. the best uh, charity in St. Louis, Pools Foundation. I do every anything they ask me to do, I do it. 
They are sweetheart people and they do a lot. And I love his, Albert will fly back, you know, and when he played for the angels, he'd fly back even on a bummed up fucking leg and come back and like run host a basketball game that raised like, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for charity with, his special needs kids they are the sweetest we love them so much they love albert's like their brother or it's just it's a sweet thing i know what he does on the field but i know him like through the charity stuff more than anything and he's just the best with that dude i i and i love his char- his charity is my one of my favorite charities in san luis wow yeah so looking back now looking back at your career uh obviously starting with the role of hockey going to ice hockey um, man, how great for you to be in this position to be able to play the game you love? And well, I probably got CTE, mm-hmm. but other no, I'm sure. I, well, maybe <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I took a lot of hits, man. But right now, I live a good life, dude. I work my ass off still, but I don't. I'm not owned by anybody. I don't have to fight anybody. No. Not that that was. I loved it, and uh, you know, like I'm my head's okay. Did I save enough money? Hell no. I spent a lot of money on a lot of things. I party <laughs> like a rock star, but it all worked out in the end because I was nice to people Yeah, and I was social and now people want to be around and do stuff with me. And it just works with my radio show and stuff. Not that I like force that or anything. It just happens naturally. And I got lucky, but on the other hand, I was nice to people. Hmm. Now, not all the time. Like sometimes I'm like, maybe I got too wasted one night and I said, but overall, if you just you're good to people, like good things happen to you, man. Hmm. So, someone want, one of our fans want to know, what do you consider being a coach one day? I get asked all the time, homie. Not <laughs> professionally. No, 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 no. Well, no. Like triple A, yeah, triple A. Eureka High School wanted me to. I'm like, dude, I chill, homie. Like that's a dedication. I'll come out there and say hey to the kids and pump them up and teach them different things and put, build their confidence up and just tell them stuff about the yeah. real world or something like that. Like I'll do that. But for me to be consistently doing, I, I like to chill at home, my puppies, my lovely wife and golf after I get done going on the radio for four hours mm-hmm. and have to be like entertaining for four hours. Now I got to go coach. I can't do it, man. I got podcasts. My brain only works so long throughout the day. I got to spend time with my wife mm-hmm. in my lovely house. I like to chill. So I don't have time for it, but I will help them out. Hmm. Yeah, so speaking of uh, speaking of your podcast, tell our fans of uh, how did you and Andy get started and uh, how often do you guys record? We do one a week. We're going to do two a week, but now us and Chicklets and all that, we did one a week. We get big dogs on, man. We got yeah. Wayne Gretzky, 99. Wow. Like, look at Ooh. our list. Just look at it. Like, look I, uh, at our list. Who's got a better list than us? Not and me. I love Biz and the boys. We mm-hmm. love them. We're like, they are so awesome to us. Mm-hmm. They pump us up and they help us. You know, they're like, I, I, we're friends. I love Wit Dog. I love them all. Um, and we, you know, they're the coolest. And we, all the podcast, we're not like enemies with no one's, any, we, we're all help each other. We all want people to listen to yeah. all of us. And like, whatever you want to listen to that particular day, like whatever you like, but the podcasts are out there, man. And we're real, but we get the best guests. <laughs> That's it. We do. And I gave Andy Strickland credit for that because wow. he just knows the boys and they say yes to us. Well, wow, Wayne Gretzky, that's a man. That's oh, Red that's, Hall, Doug Gilmore. I mean, look at our list. It's ridiculous. You got it. It's you, ridiculous. Have you, uh, have you had Mark Messier yet? Hell yeah, homeboy. <laughs> we just got him two weeks ago. Come on now. Look at the damn list, dude. It's compare it. it like they other, I might be ridiculous. Andy might be goofy. Da, 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 da. But as far as a list of guests are concerned, it's hard to debate who has the best. Wow. Yeah. yeah how about ken danico not yet oh well we are we, oh. yeah we haven't done it yet okay i don't think no we haven't done it yet yeah no. we had scotty stevens oh scotty stevens we had brian gianta we oh. had uh God, who, uh, from the De- marty Bredor. oh we had, um just as devils lou lamarillo <laughs> <laughs> uh see what i mean yeah so we get the big boy now daniel needs to be a part of that list yeah he's my main man so anyway, just look it up. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, so far? Obviously, uh, Colorado's uh, waiting for the winner for Rangers and uh, Lightning. Uh, what are your thoughts on tonight's game and the rest of the series? And whoever wins this game, do you think will win the series? I man, I don't know. Colorado's pretty good. I don't know about their goaltending. Uh, I wouldn't count out Tampa Bay if my life depended on it, though. 
Now with Patty Maroon scoring big goals. Now with Steven Stamkos playing like uh, Stevie Eisenman. Now like Vicar had not like Andre Vasquez. He's like, no, I'm the big dog. No, I'm better than you. She's your skin. She's her skin, whatever, how you, he's a good player. Love him. Igor, Igor. I love it. MSG. I love that. Love it. Love it. Love it. I like Ryan Reeves. Yes. I like that. Jacob Truba will put you on your ass. I like bread man Panarin. I like Chris Kreider. goes hundred miles an hour. He's cool. Is it so Benajev could have that stupid ass iPad all you want. He's going to take it from me. He's going to smash it down. (laughs) And you guys are going to go score a goal. I love all that homeboy. I do. But Um, Tampa, Tampa ain't no joke. Mm-hmm. So, um, who do you, who do you, uh, do you think the Rangers? I mean, obviously, we need a couple of players. Truba needs to cut down on the penalties. He had three penalties last game. Uh, he needs to cut. The, I mean, I, I guess we're, well, yeah. those, are, those are weak ass calls, but I, I don't know why. Uh, whatever. But um, ticky tack. So, do you think do you think the Rangers will win tonight at home or do you no think, no? Hmm. But I don't know though. Listen to me. I don't tell people to gamble and shit. I don't do that. I don't want you spending your money on my stupid ass assessment on anything. Unless the only time I'll tell you to gamble is if there's a dad's trip throughout the regular season and the bodies have all the dads in the box. I put money on that game. You catch my drift? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh God. Um, what do you, uh, all right. Before we get to the last two things, um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, because I got to pee like a racehorse, homeboy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, no, you're no, you're good. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's all good. <laughs> Tell our fans what the Devils, your former team, the Devils, and your other former team, the Blues, need to do to to get where they w- want to be. The Devils are a different animal. They're in a different category. The Blues are right there. The Blues are in the category of being right there, meaning a couple things here and there from Doug Armstrong, who you just never count out with anything. He's one of the best GMs in, in the league, if not the best. And he knows how to win. They've been consistent for a long, long time. Uh, the, the, the Blues need to do a couple different things, and they figure out their goalie situation. Yeah. they got some contracts coming up. David Perron's a big, <clears throat> a big issue on what he's going to want. But Martyr Sango's coming up here soon. But as far as this year is concerned, Billy Huso is a concern. As far as where, where he wants to go, he's probably going to be let go. Then you got a couple of Charlie Lindgren coming up as far as a backup. But the Blues know that maybe you need two legit goalies, so you have to spend a little bit more money on it. Very complex, very complicated. I don't want to bore everybody with it. We don't have enough time. But as far as the devil's concerned, you better figure something out. Yeah. And I love that organization. I love the fans. They're die hard. But you got some cool superstars there. Figure it out. I don't know what they need to do. I'm Blues – and through and through because I have to deal with it on a daily basis. But I see what the Devils are doing, and that franchise has been through some badass, awesome years, and they've been in a funk for too long. And the fans who are diehard deserve a little bit better. But they got superstars, and I like them. Mm-hmm. Just got to put it together a little bit more. A couple pieces here and there, baby. Yeah, I can't wait. We're gonna get, I can't wait to cover the Devils this year. Uh, I, I work for Jersey Sporting News also, so we're, we're, we're going to get – Get to cover Devils games, hopefully, this year. Um, but uh, the last few things, our team is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. We're trying to help him prevent, prevent human trafficking, uh, making sure the community stays safe, the kids stay safe. So we'll send you the foundation uh, so you can yeah. go pick it up. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. that is a – yeah, it's a big, big deal. Yeah. I was talking about my radio show the other day about trafficking, man. Like a, that little girl got stolen from an NBA game the other day. Oh, wow. A couple months ago. It's like, what? It was a weird, it just happens all the time. These truck stops in Iowa and stuff like that. No, I, I get it, man. I do my research and all that kind of stuff. So it's a big deal and it's a horrifying thing to think about. So let's uh, yeah, let's uh, help that out a little bit. I get you, buddy. Thank you. And the last thing here, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the essential workers right now? Oh, well, gosh, you guys are kicking ass is what you do. You work 12-hour shifts. We love all y'all. We think about you guys. My mom was a nurse at Clayton Jail, which is hardcore. And I know all these nurses that went through COVID and had a deal and you, they take their masks off and they have like indentions because they've been working for 18 hours straight. We love you. We're thinking about you. And my dad had went through some stuff, you know, and the nurses, they were so sweet and awesome. Oh my God. So you, we're thinking about all you guys. Well, wow. uh, tell your mom, I said, thank you for her service. Oh man. She's a badass, by the way, just wow. so you know. <laughs> Sweetheart, but a badass. <laughs> I didn't come from the sky, you know. Oh, you guys, you came, you came, from, you came from a badass family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're tough, but cool, you know. 
Yeah, so before we close this out, would you uh, like to plug your podcast to our fans and where they can find you on social media? Well, just follow me on Twitter, CamDan25, Instagram. I got two different Facebook accounts where I have my my personal, which you could look up. I keep everything open. I keep my DMs open. You can email, uh, not email, but DM me. I'll get, try to get back to you as quick as I can. I like it. Hardcore stuff. Anything, man. I, I, I'm like, I, I love that. So I, I'm very intimate with the fans. And that's why we have such a cult following. And I, I not that's the only reason, but like if I was a fan, I want my guy to talk to me. Like, I don't know. Like, so I, I'm, I'm good with that stuff. So everything's open Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, man. Camera Strict Podcast, Five Nine the Fan in St. Louis. Just download the app. It's easy. All oh, it's easy. Yep, there it is. That wraps up episode 1016 with former St. Louis Blues and New Jersey Devils right wing Cam Jansen. Go follow him on all social media formats. Go subscribe to his podcast with Andy Strickland, uh, the Cam and Strick podcast, and go follow him on the radio station. Uh, man, and thank you to our fans. Oh, there you go. St. Louis Cardinals uh, cup right there. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so t- thank you to our fans for tuning in and asking questions also. I love, Thanks, uh, guys. I love when the fans interact. But thank you again, Cam. Uh, we would love to have you back on the show down the line so you can meet the full team. But keep up the great work. And, uh, man, uh, just keep it up. Cool, dudes. Be cool, guys. Thank you. Love you all. See you. See you, buddy.